Every year at CES, Samsung and the rest of the TV industry show up to show off their latest toys. And that's no different for CES 2021, even though everything is virtual this year. So joining me from Samsung is Mike Kadish and Dan Shanazi. Thank you guys for joining us. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. Yeah, and we're going to be talking about all, all the cool new stuff, but I think the thing I'm most excited about from Samsung is the new micro LED sets the, that are going to be available to consumers. This is a sort of sequel to the wall, I guess, or a more streamlined version of the wall that set you guys announced a couple years ago. That's a giant micro LED thing. It's panels, you know, you place in the wall. Um, this is something you guys are positioning as something that people can buy in stores and set up on their own. Can you guys tell me, um, yeah, can you give me a briefing? What is up with these micro LED TV sets? Because I find them really interesting. The wall yep. required professional installation. Yep. I'm wondering, like, how will people go about even getting these into these into their homes and setting them up? Yeah, great question. So back in 2018 at CES, we introduced the wall. Uh, it was our B2B offering. It was modularized, so you could get professional installers to come in, uh, com combine the different modulars into one large uh, display. Uh, now we're, we're excited to show that in 2021, uh, the micro LED is coming to consumers' homes. Uh, we're offering it in three distinct screen sizes, an 88 inch, a 99 inch, and a massive 110 inch solution. Uh, as I said, all of them pre-configured for consumers. You can take it out of the box, install it yourselves. You don't need gotcha. professional installation to come. Is it, a, is it, are they going to be individual panels that you kind of piece together Lego-like, or is it going to be one consistent thing and you just find a way to put it on your wall? Yeah, okay. it's, yeah it's I'll take that unit. one. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. okay. it, it's, a, it's a single unit, which, uh, okay. which makes installation quite simple. And to your, to your, uh, early, your first question uh, about ease of installation, um, you can think of the original wall as sort of a, a Lego set, if yeah, you will. Yeah. You had to put it together, and it was about a, a three or four day project for a professional. Uh, <laughs> this is, you know, all all in a frame. It's it's you know there are adjustment points, of course, but uh, you know it's framed and it's ready to hang on the wall. Gotcha. And just to refresh for our you know readers and listeners here. Um, Everybody, you know, when you talk about micro LED, uh, this is a new technology that kind of combines what we really like about OLED, like individual pixel based illumination, um, but without some of the downsides of OLED, right? Um, is there anything that's super different between the wall panels and these consumer micro LED sets? Are we losing anything here? Yeah, I'll take that one. Um, it, it's actually, the, the technology is quite similar. This is an emissive technology. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the, the actual micro LEDs are, are, are each one is, is represents a pixel. So, you, have mil, you know, literally millions. Um, so technology wise, it's the same. Uh, because the sizes are a little smaller, the dot pitch, uh, the space between the pixels is a little bit smaller. So it's a mm -hmm. little bit higher, higher detail actually. So very, very similar. Um, you know, like it's uh, B2B or business to business counterpart, what we call the wall, the wall Lux. Um, you know, this one's easy to install. Uh, and it also has what we call uh, a one connect box. And this is where you make all of your connections. And, and that was, um, you know, that was a carry through to from our from our 8K TVs. Very, very simple. One single fiber optic uh, connection uh, between the, the box where you make all of your AV connections and the actual display. Gotcha. And since this is, I assume, going to be a very, very thin, you know, display, how are you guys handling sound for this? Because it's already a problem for, you know, OLEDs and other TVs as things are getting thinner. These things are basically just flat panels. How is, yeah, how is sound working out here? Yeah, we are bringing a, a new object tracking sound pro functionality. Uh, so the consumer can watch the display and they'll experience kind of a realistic sound that's aligned with the picture that they see on the screen. Mm -hmm. But is the sound, is it coming from behind the display or is the display itself a speaker like we've seen on some OLEDs too? It's coming from yeah. be behind the display. From right behind, behind the, display. the display. Yeah, it's, gotcha. it's quite fascinating. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wish I was actually able to test this out. One thing I remember seeing when the wall, uh, when you guys first announced it, is that you could actually kind of make out the lines in between the different modules and the panels. Is that a, is that a concern for these TVs or does it look like a single uniform you know, screen? Yeah, it looks like a single uniform screen. Um, there are, you know, it's it takes a lot of technology to actually design this and to make it, you know, the color and the, and the vibrancy. But there's a lot of mechanics involved in this as well. It's it's pre-aligned from the factory, so don't you know don't 
you know, don't think you have to <laughs> spend hours aligning this, but there are adjustments. So, you know, if there, if any of the panels are out of alignment, they could easily be adjusted. It's actually adjustments on the side, the top, mm -hmm. the back. Uh, it, it's, it's very, very simple and ingenious actually. Is that something a consumer would be able to do, or do you have to like call Samsung and get some warranty repair or something if no, things get it, out of alignment? It, it, yeah, it could be done by a consumer. It's it's quite simple. Uh, just need mm -hmm. a small screwdriver. But again, I guess the point is this is this is pre-adjusted. Yeah. Uh, these are yeah. only touch up touch up adjustments uh, if necessary. Gotcha. Can you guys tell me? So just back to the setup part because I feel like that's what a lot of our readers, you know, and viewers are going to be interested in here. Uh, typically, when you buy a big screen TV these days, right, you take it out of the box, you flip it on a flat surface, and you pray that you don't damage the screen. You get the stand installed and everything. How how is that process going to work here? Do you have to do anything special because this is an entirely new type of display tech? Yeah, you would you wouldn't flop this on its uh, on its face, so to speak. So it's a little mm -hmm. bit different in that regard. Um, I, I actually I had the, the the I was able to see the actual setup of this in person mm -hmm. uh, just just right before New Year's, uh, and it's quite ingenious. So you know it comes shipped. It comes in a you know in a in a box vertically. You sort of open it up and it, it sits in its cushion on the bottom. Uh, and then as far as you know the logistics of of hanging this. You know, it does come with a mount. Um, you can sort of think of uh, a very clever mount. Uh, you can you can use a visa if you want, but you could okay. also use the included mount, where it just kind of if you lift it up and it clamps on. And let me let me explain. You know, the lifting process because it's a it's a yeah, rather yeah. large large display, and it it was quite ingenious how they they came up with the you know tools and to make it easier to install. So as you'd imagine, this is not a one person job, <laughs> not with a hundred and certainly not with a hundred and ten inch display. <laughs> so there's little detachable handles that can go left and right. So you 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 put your wall mount on, uh, you you put on the detachable handles left and right. Uh, so you'd have two people, probably one person on the bottom supporting, gotcha. perhaps even a fourth person to make sure the cables, you know, are, are being fed properly. It sounds almost uh, like you're moving a pane of glass, I'd imagine, because glass holders, they have to hold this, those things with special handles, right? Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's grabbing the side, mm -hmm, uh, if you mm -hmm. will. So there's a left handle and a right handle. So it's attached to the metal frame in the side and you're just simply lifting it up and, and, and hanging it like, you know, kind of like a picture frame. Gotcha. And does it have to be hanged or is there a stand that you can attach these to as well? There's a stand option available that will be sold separately. Gotcha. We, um, we presume most consumers are going to want to mount them on the wall, but uh, there will be for those consumers that want to put it on a, a console, uh, we'll have a stand available. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I have the dream of mounting my TV, but I also have a toddler. So it's like, it's tough to even like make that time happen. <laughs> a stable stand still works really well for me and a lot of consumers. Um, you know, just about this tech, by the way. Uh, so I assume this goes up to 4K. Does, what does it support when it comes to HDR and does it support HDMI 2.1 and all the good stuff people want to see in TVs these days? Yeah, it's got it's got all of those features. Um, this one actually has six HDMI's, which is uh, pretty Good. impressive. Uh, HDMI 2.1 is supported, HDR, HDR 10 plus. Uh, so all, all the latest bells and whistles are are supported, and it has our top of the line uh, video processor as well, which I guess would you, you'd expect uh, of a display of this type. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I mean, I've asked you guys, and I've asked Samsung about this before, because we see OLED screens on Samsung mobile devices, on tablets and phones and everything, but TVs, you guys never quite went there. Is this is this a thing you're betting on instead of OLED? And can you tell me specifically, you know, why that reasoning is? It, this is certainly the, the future of our mm -hmm. displayed vision. Um, Dan mentioned it earlier, the self-emissive uh, technology uh, it doesn't run into some of the, the potential pitfalls you have with organic products. Um, also, you know, each pixel uh, is an LED. Uh, and with that, you can control uh, to the pixel what image comes out of that. And as a result, you get uh, great contrast, uh, great colors, great picture quality. Gotcha. And are you guys supporting, uh, I assume 4K at this point, but are you going up to 8K with these sets? Because I know the wall can do 8K at this point. Yeah, these are 4K dis uh, displays. Gotcha, gotcha. And actually, just thinking of 8K, I remember the wall 8K, you know, the giant size you guys announced last year at CES. That seemed really impressive and everything. And I feel like a lot of TV companies are talking about 8K as this next great thing. For me, as a consumer and somebody who covers this industry, it just seems like 
the content's not there. I don't know why anybody would pay for one of those TVs. Do you guys have a sense yet of, you know, is this going to be a more, a bigger year for 8K or is it really we're waiting for that content to appear? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think the answer is twofold. From a content perspective, more and more content is becoming available. Uh, you saw some uh, gaming systems launched just recently that support AK content. Sure. Um, more well, more they support the content that doesn't exist, right? They yeah. support AK for when it yep. comes. Yeah. So, so I think the, yeah. the ecosystem is there. I think more and more content is coming. We think 2021 is going to be prime time for uh, 8K in the premium segment. Having said that, just as importantly, though, is as screens get bigger, uh, mm -hmm. and we talk about going from, you know, a few years ago, 65 inch was a big screen TV. This year, it's going to be all about 85 inch. Um, and as the screens get bigger, our ability to upscale any content, whether it's SD, Full HD, 4K into 8K, uh, is going to make, uh, make the difference when you're viewing it on such a large screen. Gotcha. And one of the cool features um, that I've read about with these new uh, micro LED sets is that you'll be able to watch up to four different sources of content at once with uh, multi view. Can you guys just tell me how does that work? Because is it only content that's at different inputs or, you know, can you just sit there and launch different streaming apps that you already have baked into the TV? How is that set up? Yeah, I can, I can take that one. So mm -hmm. what we can do, we can do a few things. We can turn, because it's 110 inch, we can turn that into the largest, if we do split screen, would be four 55 inch, uh, you know, uh, diagonal uh, images, which is still on 110 inch. That's pretty Crazy. massive. Yeah, yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, we have six HDMI. So, you know, you can have, in theory, you could have, you know, the streaming app plus, plus you know, an external streaming app or, or uh, you know, anything that you can feed in through HDMI plus streaming. Uh, gotcha. So multi-view works based per input, right? So if you're streaming the Netflix app on the TV, you need another box to stream maybe Hulu, right? Into into another input there, right? Yeah. If if, if that was your if that was your desire. That's gotcha. Great. Would it be just thinking about this feature because I think fewer people are actually buying set top boxes now because the TVs themselves are so capable. Would it ever be possible to have just Netflix and Hulu and you know Amazon Prime or something? All the apps are already baked into the TV running in those separate multi multi frame panels. Yeah, that's yeah. It would be it would be possible. Um, you mm -hmm. know, I'm not sure you'd want to watch them all at the same time. It's it's challenging. I mean, but yeah, you, yeah. You could. It, it it would be possible. Gotcha. But you're you guys aren't launching with that right now. It's based on per inputs. Okay. Per per input. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, you know, yeah. I'm one thinking streaming of... plus plus uh, physical input. I just think of uh, that scene in Back to the Future 2 where, you know, I think that was the most amazing thing uh, I remember seeing in the 90s. So it seems like we're kind of getting there. That's pretty cool. Um, and you guys also mentioned something about ambient mode, which turns these TVs into wall art or something that blends into your wall. We saw this with the frame from Samsung. Is it the same basic, you know, idea and technology behind this? Yeah, same technology, same idea. The With the frame, however, you have access to our art store Sure. and a curated collection of over 1400 images uh, from famous museums around the world. Ambient mode is something we've had for the past couple of years where um, you can set the display when you're not watching the TV to display an image that helps it blend in seamlessly with the rest of your wall. Gotcha, gotcha. And yeah, anything else you guys wanna add about these micro LED sets? I do think they're really you know, interesting sounding and compelling. Do we have a sense of availability or where the price ranges are gonna fall yet? Yeah, we're really excited to bring these to market from an availability time perspective. Availability perspective, uh, it'll be in the spring time frame. Mm -hmm. uh, and pricing, we haven't announced pricing yet, but as we get closer to launch, we'll we'll announce that information. Gotcha. I feel like that's going to be the big thing, just because people are we're seeing big LED screens kind of fall in price. So I've seen seventy-five inch sets under a thousand dollars now, which is insane. But also OLEDs, people will still pay a little more for a higher quality screen. So yeah, kind of wondering where these things are going to sit. Um, but talking about LED, by the way, what is up with the QLED sets? Because you guys announced that these are going to have a new light source that's a little smaller. Is this mini LED? What's going on there? Yeah, this is our Neo QLED, mm -hmm. which we're launching this year. I'll let Dan talk uh, the details in a bit more, but uh, simply put, we're upgrading the viewing experience from current QLEDs to our Neo QLED TV. This technology uh, is based on a new light source, mm -hmm. uh, and it'll be available on our 8K and step-up 4K QLED products. Uh, Dan, if you want to provide a bit more background. Sure, yeah, I can, 
jump in a little bit further. So it's 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 mini LED technology, okay. but it's you know as you'd expect, Samsung has further refined it, uh, you know, versus competitive offerings. Um, so one uh, the 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 package, if you will, the mini LED package. Of course, it's small mini, right? So it's ten times uh, we can pack ten times more uh, LEDs into the same space. Um, but the benefit, the consumer benefit for this is going to be the elimination of what they call haloing. You know, when, when you, mm -hmm. figure, you know, think of a, you know, a, a dark sky with a star, right? And there's just a little bit of a halo around it. It's, you know, to some purist, uh, that's, that's concerning. Yeah. You know, with this technology, it, it would it would almost negate that completely. Gotcha. Um, and that, that was know, an issue because backlight amounts were just really hard. You know, it was really hard to stuff in a lot of backlights into LED sets. The mini LED, from what I remember, it's basically allowing for more light sources and more localized light sources, right? Yeah, it's more light source and it's also more directional, okay. if you will, as well. So, you know, generally it's a, a large dispersion of light that comes from the, the backlight, uh, the LEDs. Uh, behind the panel. And this is very, very narrow in focus. So you have more of them and also more narrowly focused. Mm -hmm. um, we also have uh, much better control over that light as well. So we have actually 10, uh, 12 bit luminance control, which is, which is pretty, pretty amazing. Huh. Um, so, you know, again, the darkest detail uh, will be seen and appreciated on the new Neo QLED. Yeah, and Dan, you mentioned that you guys are doing something different that competitors aren't with mini LEDs. I actually just picked up a mini LED set last year and I've been really impressed with it. What are you guys doing differently? You know, what is Samsung adding to this technology that more, you know, we're going to see more companies adopt at this point? Yeah, so it's 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 the actual construction of the of mm -hmm. the mini LED as well. So it's 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 the narrow focusing of the light that's going to make a demonstrable difference uh, versus uh, competitive offerings. Gotcha. And, um, you know, as we round things up, I know you guys mentioned that um, there are a couple other new features coming this year to your TVs. There's Google Duo integration, which seems to be working with screen mirroring from your phone to your TV, but also some TVs will have cameras that you can actually put on. Can you guys explain a bit more about that? Yeah, so uh, 2020's changed us all. And if, yeah, if yeah. your household's anything like mine, we've had more video calls this year with friends and family than we had, or last year than we had in the past. And my shoulder's a little sore from holding my phone up in front of me <laughs> uh, to have those video chats. But um, thanks to our partnership with Google Duo and Logitech, uh, we'll be uh, offering a third party, the Logitech video camera that can be installed um, separately. So it's not pre-configured, not the TV doesn't come with it installed. Mm -hmm. um, consumers can uh, buy it separately, install it, uh, or plug it into the TV itself. Uh, click on the Google Duo app and seamlessly have video conversations with friends and family from uh, the comfort of their living room, looking at a, a giant big screen instead of a small mobile device. That's pretty cool. And which TVs will support this integration? Uh, that's going to be all of our QLED TVs. Gotcha. So not the micro LED stuff coming. I need to double check on the micro. Yeah. We'll have to check on that. You know, yeah, we'll uh, yeah. I guess you you may have trouble mounting a camera somewhere on that micro LED set, but yeah. okay, that's pretty cool. And one other a little tidbit I saw is you guys announced something called Super Ultra Wide Game View, which lets uh, a TV give you the same basic. I don't know, viewing angle as a super ultra wide monitor. I'm actually using one right now on my PC. Can you guys just give me a sense of how that'll work? So does this mean, you know, just portions of the, of the screen will be blacked off and you'll get a wider, yep. you know, kind of a wider aspect ratio as you play something? That's exactly yeah, right. I can, yeah, I can, ahead, that's right. Um, we now have support for 21 by nine or, or even 31 by nine aspect ratio. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's uh, many of the popular PC games uh, will support wide aspect ratio gaming. Uh, so if you do connect, you know, play those games on a PC, that PC connected uh, to your TV, you can enjoy a much wider view. So you can see, sure. you know, to the left and to the right, uh, more detail than you could if it was just a, a 16 by nine image. So it's a, it's a, a more immersive uh, experience. For sure. I definitely like playing a lot of PC games there. I guess you will be sacrificing a bit of like vertical, you know, screen space to make this work, right? Yeah, you'll have a, a a black and a black border top and bottom, but that's yep. inherent in the, uh, the 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 video image. Sure. Yeah, and sure. additionally, we're introducing something called a game bar, uh, mm -hmm. which will be able to fill up some of that black space that you just referenced. Which the game bar can provide information that lets consumers monitor and adjust critical aspects of their uh, gaming uh, that they're actually playing. 
uh, such as input lag, if they've got a headset connected, what the different aspect ratios are and such. Right, frame rates, frame rates as well, if HDR is mm -hmm. on or off, what the aspect ratio is. So, you know, to, I guess to the casual gamer, maybe those aren't so exciting, but for the people that are really immersive into games, those are very important things to know. Sure, I'm definitely, I'm talking to people who want to put TVs, you know, on their desks at this point to do their PC gaming. So I guess we're kind of getting there as a market. Um, just kind of to round things down for you guys here, you know, we're entering 2021. 2020 was a crazy year for all of us, um, but especially it seemed like home entertainment became a more important thing to a lot of people because we couldn't really go anywhere. How is Samsung approaching 2021? And are you guys putting more, yeah, you know, more of an emphasis on home entertainment and what you guys can do to help consumers who are stuck at home? Yeah, definitely. You know, um, consumers have missed out on so many experiences in 2020. Uh, that they're used to, you know, people aren't going to movies, all the, the new releases are being launched on their uh, streaming apps, people aren't going to restaurants, they're ordering in and eating with their family in front of the TV. Uh, so what we're trying to do in 2021 is make life easier for consumers, because a lot of the things that uh, consumers have done in the past, we think some of those are going to stay, uh, consumers aren't going to all of a sudden go out and uh, uh, be in, with crowds of people uh, anytime soon. So we're trying to develop and provide solutions that make consumers' lives easier. Um, you know, consumers are, they're not going out to the gym anymore uh, as much as they used to. So we're we launched with our launch of Samsung Health and our smart trainer. Uh, consumers can work out from the comfort of their living room and get feedback on the poses and positioning and the number of reps they're taking and have a, a holistic dashboard of their health uh, right there in, from, in front of them. Uh, consumers aren't going into the office to work anymore. Uh, we're introducing something called Remote Access Plus that allows consumers to connect to their office PC directly from their TV. They can also access uh, Office 365 documents directly from their TV as well. So there are a bunch of things consumers aren't doing anymore that they used to a few years ago. We're trying to make their lives easier and let them do those things at home from their TV. Great. Well, thank you so much, guys, for giving us the rundown and all the Samsung news. We've been chatting with Mike Kadish and Dan Shanasi from Samsung. Stay tuned to Engadget.com for more news from CES 2021. We'll have a lot more on TVs, home entertainment, and PCs. And if you dug this video, be sure to like and subscribe.